Good day, everybody. Good day, everybody. This is Dr. Sanjay Sanyal, Professor Department Chair. This is going to be a demonstration of the muscles of the flexor compartment of the right forearm. So this is super cadaver. I'm standing on the right side. I'm holding the camera. So the best place to start will be from the cubital fossa itself. So this is the cubital fossa which we have widely opened out. So let's take a look at the muscle on the lateral aspect. This muscle that we see, this is the brachioradialis muscle. Brachioradialis, as you know, it takes origin from just above the lateral epicondyle, the lateral supracondylar ridge, and it also takes origin from just below that. And here we can see there are two bundles of muscle fibers. This cadaver has got a few anatomical variations. And the muscle fibers, they converge downwards and they form the lateral boundary of the cubital fossa. And under cover of this muscle, we can see this nerve here. This is the radial nerve. We shall talk more about it later. The fibers then they become aponeurotic. And we can see it gets inserted in this particular cadaver by means of two bundles. They get inserted by means of flat, thin aponeurotic sheet onto just above the radial stalactite process. And passing under cover of the brachioradialis was this artery also. Apart from the superficial branch of the radial nerve, this is the radial artery. And we can see the superficial branch of the radial nerve is emerging from between the two fibers of the brachioradialis here. And then it will go to the dorsum of the hand. This brachioradialis reflex can be elicited by tapping with the reflex hammer just above the left standard process of the radius. Plastic surgeons use this brachioradialis for myocutaneous flap surgery. They use it on a vascularized pedicle composed of this radial artery. Now let's come to the next muscle just under that. We can see this muscle here. This is supinator muscle. The supinator muscle, it takes origin from the supinator crest and it curves around on the lateral aspect of the radius and gets inserted onto a V-shaped area above the anterior and posterior oblique lines of the radius. So this is the supinator and it forms part of the floor of the cubital fossa. And we can see that the supinator is pierced by this nerve here. This is the deep branch of the radial nerve. And it divides the supinator into a superficial and a deep part. And rarely supinator entrapment syndrome can occur when this nerve can get entrapped between the two levels of the supinator muscle. Now let's take a look at the superficial muscles of the flexor compartment. As we know, the flexor compartment has got muscles divided into three layers. Layer one, two, and three. The best way to remember is by starting with this muscle here. This is the pronator teres. The pronator teres has also got two heads. One head is the humeral head, which takes origin from the common flexor origin. And then there's an ulnar head which takes origin from the ulna just below that. And the two heads then unite and they form the pronator teres muscle which gets inserted onto the pronator impression on the lateral aspect of the radius. And this forms the intromediate boundary of the cubital fossa. And we can see that piercing through the pronator, two heads of the pronator teres is this nerve here. This is the median nerve. And again, the median nerve can get it trapped with the two heads of the pronator teres and can produce what is known as the pronator syndrome, which will produce pain in the floor of the cubital fossa, and it will also produce numbness, tingling, and paresthesia on the distal distribution of the median nerve when we do a stress test. This is the first muscle of the superficial layer, P. The next muscle of the superficial layer is this, F. This is flexor carpi radialis, which takes origin from the common flexor origin, and the fiber becomes steadiness it does not pass through the carpal tunnel. Instead, it passes through a separate tunnel, FCR tunnel in the trapezoid bone, trapezium bone. And then it gets inserted onto the base of the second metacarpal bone. Then we have the next muscle. This is this tendon here. This is the palmaris longus. Palmaris longus tendon has got a very long tendon which does not serve much purpose. It gets inserted onto the flexor retinaculum. This palmaris longus tendon is used for tendon transplant and it is also used to repair any ligament injury. Like for example, when the ulnar collateral ligament of the elbow joint is injured in baseball players, there's a procedure called the Tommy John procedure, 
where this tendon is used to repair the torn ulnar collateral ligament. And the next muscle is this one here. This is the flexor carpi ulnaris. Flexor carpi ulnaris is it takes origin from the medial epicondyle. It gives an aponeurotic expansion, which gets attached to the ulna, and therefore it forms a tunnel, which is known as the cubital tunnel. And passing through the cubital tunnel, and subsequently under cover of the flexor carpi ulnaris, is this nerve here. This is the ulna nerve. So therefore, the ulna nerve can get entrapped in the cubital tunnel. Uh, accompanying the ulnar nerve is the ulnar artery, which is located just lateral to that. And the flexor carpi ulnar tendon gets inserted onto the pisiform bone, which is considered as a sesamoid bone, and an extension of that goes to the first fifth metacarpal, which is the piso metacarpal ligament. So these are the four muscles in the level layer number one of the flexor compartment. Now let's lift this up and show the next muscle under that. That is this muscle here. This is the flexor digitorum superficialis. Flexor digitorum superficialis, it has also got two heads a humeral ulnar head and a radial head. And you can see the radial head when I lift this up here. The radial head takes origin from the anterior oblique line of the radius. And again, passing between the two heads of the flexor digitorum superficialis, we have the same median nerve which can theoretically can get entrapped here also. The flexor digitorum superficialis tendon, it again breaks up into four tendons, which go through the carpal tunnel and it gets inserted onto the middle phalanx of the, lat the middle four digits. So therefore they can flex only up to the middle digit. This is the layer number two. When I reflect this layer number two, then we see the next muscle, the three muscles in the deep layer, and that can be best seen when we reflect this. This is the next muscle. This is the flexor digitorum profundus. The flexor digitorum profundus takes origin from the anterior surface of the ulna. And the fibers, they also break up into four tendons, which go through the carpal tunnel and get inserted onto the distal phalanx. Each of these tendons, they pierce through a bifid slip of the flexor digitorum superficialis. Along with this flexor digitorum profundus, we have this other muscle here, this one. This is the flexor pollicis longus, which takes origin from the anterior surface of the radius below the anterior oblique line of the radius. And this flexor pollicis longus also passes through the carpal tunnel. And each of these tendons, by the way, also are enclosed in the sinovial sheath. And then it gets inserted onto the distal phalanx of the thumb. And the final muscle with the deep compartment is this one here. This is the pronator quadratus. And you can see the pronator quadratus very clearly here. It takes origin from the pronator crest of the ulna. The fibers, they get inserted onto the anterior surface of the lower part of the radius. It is shaped like a quadrangle. That's why it's called pronator quadratus. And this assists the pronator teres in pronation of the arm. That brings me to an important clinical point here. My finger is moving across the space. And we can see that space is bounded posteriorly by the pronator quadratus. Anteriorly, it is bounded by the flexor digitorum profundus and by the flexor pollicis longus, this space. Laterally, it is bounded by the facial attachment to the radius. Medially, it is bounded by the facial attachment to the ulna. And superiorly, it is bounded by the origin of the flexor pollicis longus and the flexor digitorum profundus from the anterior aspects of the radius and the ulna respectively. So this whole space is referred to as the space of perona. This space of perona is a potential space which can be a source of collection of infected material or pus which can travel from the mid palmar space through the carpal tunnel into the space of perona. So this is the space of perona. So these are the muscles in the flexor compartment of the arm, namely this layer number one, PFPF, layer number two, FTS, layer number three, the flexor pollicis longus, FPL, PQ, pronator quadratus, and flexor digitorum profundus. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe. Have a nice day.